here live in Southwest Florida, chilly Southwest Florida this morning. It is chilly here this morning. I think it's chilly everywhere today. I mean, goodness, it's the end of January. So unless you're in the Southern Hemisphere and you're enjoying sunny, warm, uh, summertime weather here in the Northern Hemisphere, it's probably chilly today, <laughs> even here in Southwest Florida. It's 54 degrees right now. Um, not too bad in the house. Obviously, I even felt like wearing sleeveless today, uh, but I did blow dry my hair and that always warms me up too. If you are joining me live, please say hello. This is episode 778 today. We are really uh, heading towards 800, you know. Hi, Thea and Grace, Donna. Christine, Judy, Joe, Lily, Judy, 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 Diane, Brenda, Anna. Good morning, everybody. What did Judy say? Four degrees in uh, um, Connecticut. Yeah, that's cold. I think 54 is pretty cold too, but um, you know, it's all relative. It's what you're used to, uh, but four degrees sounds extremely cold. Three degrees in Massachusetts. Oh my goodness, that's cold too. I'm gonna put a little bit of lotion on my hands. Does anybody else need extra lotion when it's cold out? I'm always need. I always keep extra lotion here at my desk. I mean, I even showered and you know put on lotion this morning. But there's something about coming in here, and uh, I always like to have a little thing of lotion for my hands when I come into my office. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Hi, Lions at Create... Uh, Leona. Leona, good morning. Hi, Diane and Brenda, Val, Anna. Hi, Melissa and Lorraine. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is episode 778. I'm Kristen Omdahl, and we're here live in my studio this morning. I have been working on tutorial videos for the new book behind the scenes all week. I am more than halfway done getting them all uploaded and scheduled, which is so exciting because as soon as the book goes from pre-order to shipping and in stock and you know, and shipping, uh, we're going to start releasing one uh, video tutorial per day for 24 days to represent all 24 patterns in the book. The videos are not necessarily meant to be full, oh, here, watch this video, make the whole project. They're meant as supplemental tut tutorial videos to guide you through making the project if you have the pattern and the charts. So even if it's a technique that you are new to, between the detailed written instructions, the close-up photos, the detailed charts, and the supplemental video tutorials, I'm hoping you'll have a successful experience at trying something new. Hi, Carrie. Good morning. Hi, Mariana. Thanks, Judy, for posting the link. So yes, the book is available for pre-order now until it starts shipping. And what that means is when you order a copy of the book, it won't ship right away. It won't ship until they're in stock, which will be sometime next week, probably. And as long as you order during the pre-order, when the book becomes available, I will be sending out a coupon code for everybody who pre-ordered the book to get $7 off the ebook if you're interested. So it's a huge savings if you're interested in both. Am I wearing the sweet Clara top today? No, Donna, I'm wearing the summer love vest today, which I guess is because it was wishful thinking. It's chilly outside, so I wanted to wear something more summery. I'm drinking extra hot beverages to keep me warm instead. Um, this is the summer love vest. I'm wearing it over a high-waisted jean skirt and a tank top bodysuit. You could wear it over leggings. You could wear it over jeans. You could wear it over a fitted dress like I do sometimes. Um, and today I'm doing a fitted silhouette, but instead of a dress, doing a high-waisted denim skirt with the bodysuit. Um, either way, I think it's always a great contrast if you're going to wear a flowy outer layer that you should wear a fitted layer, fitted layers underneath and vice versa. Um, I think that if you wore a flowy layer underneath and then the flowy vest on top, I think it doesn't do anybody's figure any favors. Um, I think it ends up just adding uh, the illusion of more bulk than is there, and I don't think any of us want extra bulk. So <laughs> at least I can't think of anybody that wants extra bulk, probably. Um, who knows? <laughs> anyway, if you're like me or you have a few extra pounds or you are curvy like me, you might uh, 
enjoy this tip that if you wear a fitted layer underneath a flowy layer, it will not make the flowy layer add bulk. So I think that that's a wonderful tip. It's something that took me a few years to learn, but now that I learned it, I would never wear uh, something loose underneath. So I'll give you an example. Uh, remember that purple dress I wore earlier in the week with the demi sleeves on it? It was a purple dress from Amazon and I crocheted sleeves on it in Be So Fine yarn in Passionate Plum. Um, that dress is a tank top style dress, but it has a sewn waist and then a fit and flared skirt. So it goes out quite a bit. And because of that, anything that does this, uh, even though the dress itself is somewhat fitted in the top, because it goes out at the bottom, this vest is not flattering over the top of it. Now, if you think of some of the other fitted dresses that I have in my Amazon shop that I do wear with this vest and other flowy vests is, it's fitted all the way down, and then there is that contrast between fitted dress and flowy outer layer. Does that make sense? Because if it doesn't, I can, I'd be happy to explain it a little more. Thank you, Donna. Yeah, this is a fun pattern. It's a top-down raglan-shaped yoke, and then once you get through separating for the sleeve and the body, then you go on to the lace section, and the lace section is has no increases in it, so it makes it really easy to do. You can add buttons or a shawl pin or any other type of closure. I just happen to like making long lace, uh, making long chains and corset tying in the front. And once I do this, um, I just keep it tied and that way even though it's a vest like this morning when I went to my closet to take this out of the closet and put it on I have the corset tie already tied up which saves me a little bit of time and I just pop it over my head like a pullover even though it's worn like a vest hopefully that makes sense too <laughs> hi Barbara good morning hi Trina thank you Anna I love the color too this is what color is this Celestial Blue Mist in Be So Fine Yarn. I've got so many beautiful colors in Be So Fine Yarn, though. You could find so many beautiful colors. And you could also use Be So Fine Bling Silver Bling or Be So Fine Gold Bling. Or you could use Be So Lush Yarn. All of those are number one fingering weight yarns. And like I have said many times before, as long as you're paying attention to the... Um, yarn weight in a pattern. So like, you know, especially on my patterns, I'll tell you what generic yarn I used, meaning what weight by, you know, the standard weight sizes by Craft Yarn Council of America, just the standard, like number one, number two, number three, number four. And I'll tell you how many yards or meters you need. And then I'll specifically state what yarn I actually used and how many balls. But if you're looking to substitute for a project, it's really helpful to have that generic listing on the pattern because that allows you to choose between different number one fingering weight yarns. Um, I happen to have four, like I just mentioned, but then the other thing that you would want to also consider is if you're changing fiber content, sometimes it can change your gauge or, you know, it can change your gauge anyway, as long as you're doing different uh, yarns. So you would want to do a gauge swatch for sure. And also it's a garment. So definitely want to do a gauge swatch, swatch to make sure you make something that fits you. Bunch of comments. Let's see what's coming in. Barbara has made the summer loving. That's great. Um, Karen it's too self-conscious to wear close fitting garments, just started wearing leggings. But that's fine, Karen, that's what I'm talking about. Wearing a loose flowy top over leggings is the contrast that I'm talking about. Instead of wearing a loose flowy top over baggy jeans that flare at the bottom, wearing leggings underneath a flowy top is exactly the same thing I'm talking about. So don't worry that you don't like to wear your clothes as fitted as I do. I'm like the caricature version of setting an example, right? <laughs> so you don't have to go as extreme as I do. It's still that contrast. So if you're wearing leggings with a loose flowy top over the top, you're actually doing the same exact thing that I'm talking about. Uh, be fun to do a video where I, I couldn't do it live, I guess, unless I hopped out of the room and changed clothes, but I sure would like to show you some like different examples of showing the same knit and crochet pieces over different style under layers so you could see what I'm talking about. Do you want me to do a, what, what do you call that? Do's and don'ts? I, is that the right thing? I can't think of what it would be called. What would I call that? 
I know if I just put it out there, everybody will try to share uh, their thoughts on it. But it, I know it's always more fun when we do things live, but I'm trying to figure out how I would do that live. Because I'm telling you, if you could see what I'm talking about with different shapes and silhouettes of underlayers, you would totally get what I'm... Styling do's and don'ts. Yeah, I guess that's it. You know, there's something about saying styling do's and don'ts that comes across as like not so friendly and I don't mean to be not friendly and I certainly want to be inclusive uh styling tips tips and tricks definitely sounds um more positive yeah even that old show what not to wear there's something about the, the that wording that has a negative connotation to me and I uh just don't feel like making it a negative thing. I really want it to be a positive thing only. Okay, somebody, uh, does the camera add pounds? That's what they say. Yes, that is what they say. I also think donuts and bacon and um, potato chips add pounds, but <laughs> but yes, uh, the camera can add pounds. Also, knowing how to pose in front of a camera can add or detract pounds too. That's something that I would love to share with you guys one day too, is to share a video on how to pose in front of the camera because I've done a lot of posing in front of cameras in my lifetime, you know, uh, starting with modeling and yeah, I could use the room divider and dress behind. And as long as I had like, I don't know, an easy underlayer on it, it wouldn't be too hard to do. Yeah, maybe we'll do that one day next week. It would be so fun. Uh, I'll have to move the desk and move the camera back so you can see a whole the whole body. But yeah, I think it would be really, really, the visual contrast will be really interesting. I think you'd love it. Okay, having said that, I am still doing research on finding um, a new iPad so that I can have two devices from which to record and live stream so that, <laughs> so that I can do a little more teaching of how to take photos and how to do things with the camera. Uh, I can't do that until I have two devices. And man, those things are expensive. Uh, I started looking over uh, the last couple of days and I even went to my phone provider to say, hey, got any deals right now? I uh, couldn't really find any deals. So I'm going to keep looking, but I'm definitely looking to get a second recording device so that I can share with you some of these other really fun videos that I think will be really helpful, not only if you're interested in doing side hustle, knowing how to do photography of your garments, but then maybe even for posing so that you can pose your garments on bodies and stuff like yourself. Yeah, Carrie, you know what? Um, it might just be angles. Maybe uh, it could just be the angles that you're using when you're modeling your garments. Angles can make a huge difference. Yeah, Thea, that's what I was thinking of. I was thinking about getting the bigger iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil. That would be really cool. I had one before, but <laughs> we destroyed it at this house. I'm not going to say who. Hi, Rita. Good morning. Hi, Deborah. Happy first day of retirement. That's exciting. Thanks, Trina. Okay, so I was going to show you something on my computer again this morning because I'm so excited. Uh, <laughs> I'm working on the next video for the 24 crochet hats tutorials and the next video is the cocoa hat which is the tapestry crochet um, animal print and what I did in for this video I didn't really go I'm not really going into how to do the tapestry crochet because we already did that for the Cinnabuddy hat and we've already done that for some of the other things in the book since there's a couple things that are uh, 
tapestry crochet, specifically single crochet through the back loop only. So I showed the technique of single crochet through the back loop only with following a color chart, with changing color before the last step of each stitch. So all of that was already done in the Cinnabunny hat. And so for this hat, I thought it was more important to talk about colors because even within one animal print chart, you have so many different looks that you could go with. Okay, so this, for example, is the warm neutral color palette for um, that I chose for the animal print, which is Ecru, I think gold and chocolate. But let me show you, I did a mock-up of different colors of animal print. I'm gonna zoom in on this. Yeah, I'm gonna zoom in on all of them. There we go. Okay, so I'll move my, I gotta look at my computer backwards again. That was tough to do yesterday. <laughs> Remember when I was trying to use my uh, trackpad? Okay, here we go. Okay, so here is the chart that comes with the pattern, and that is representing the three colors that I just mentioned. That, that's the repeating pattern of this, and it's in colors Ecru, Chocolate, and Gold for a warm, neutral animal print, um, or leopard, cheetah, whatever you wanna call it. And then this is a representation of like a snow leopard. So the snow leopard you could do with either going with a white background like snowflake, or you could go with one of the lighter grays like silver lavender. And then the darker two colors on there could be with anything from platinum to charcoal, and then for the lighter gray or the medium gray, and then for the darkest color on here, you could go with black or charcoal. So depending on how light you did the medium grays, let's see, we have grays over here. Are they showing on camera? I might have to, here we go. If I move that, ah, you can see my junk on my table now. I've always got extra drinks here. I love that hat too. Thanks, Grace. Hopefully you can see back here. It looks like it's a little bit dark. Let me turn another light on. But what I wanted to point out, well, I'm still not gonna see. Okay, what I wanted to point out is that if you went with white, you could go with any uh, one of these two colors, silver, lavender, and platinum, and then you could go with charcoal for the dark. If you went with silver lavender for the lightest color, then you could go with platinum and or charcoal for the medium color and then go with black for the third color. So however you decided to do it, you would even have options. You have options in the warm um, neutral, also in the warm neutral colors as well, but this is the cool neutral colors to do like a snow leopard. Then you could do this because each of the colors, each of the color families in Be So Baby Yarn, we've got 60 colors, right? Um, each of the color families have lots of shades within them, so you could do an animal print or a leopard in any of the colors. So here's doing an animal print or the leopard print in pinks. So look at the pink square behind me. See it over here? And that doesn't even represent all the pinks that we have. So the lightest background shade on my computer screen, that could be blush pink or tutu, one of those super light colors. And then the medium pink on here could be anything from princess to diva. And there's so many other pinks in between. Then the darkest color on here could still be black or charcoal, or you could go into burgundy or cherry. So you could either do all three of these colors, pinks and reds, or you could keep that third color black as well. Does that make sense? I'm not seeing comments, so um, I don't know if everybody's just listening to me or if there's, um, yeah, this is a color graph, yes. So it represents the color you would do for each of the, uh, for each of the stitches. Okay, and then here is a turquoise animal print. Now, but think about it, whether you're doing purples or turquoises or blues or greens or reds or pinks or oranges or yellows or peaches or cold, cool neutrals or warm neutrals, it doesn't matter. You can do an animal print in any color family. So in this one, let's see, where's the, so you can see the turquoises are behind me now. I'm gonna have to move. <laughs> no. So in the for the background color here, you could do any of the super light colors, robin egg blue, 
uh, turquoise, mint, um, aquamarine, and then the medium uh, blue turquoise in there, it could be splash, it could be peacock teal, it could be uh, any of those mediums up there. And then you could go with black for the last, for the dark color. But if you wanted that darkest color to be peacock teal, then you would just go in lighter tones in the middle. So what do I mean by that? Let's see, let's pull them up. So here's the blue, here's the blue uh, turquoises here. So there's actually enough colors here that you could do all three colors in color and skip the black for the third color. Or you could still do black for the darkest color as well, but you could go with robin egg blue for the lightest color on there. You could pick aquamarine or splash for the medium, and you could pick um, peacock teal or forest green for the dark. Or like I said, you could pull in charcoal or black for that darkest color. Same with the greens here. You could do mint, mint or turquoise for the background color. Then you could go with jade or emerald for the medium color and even go with clover for the darkest color or pull over here and do forest green for the darkest color still. Same with the blues here. We've got Prince, Mykonos Blue, Cobalt, Indigo, and Navy. You could definitely pull three different colors here to do a, um, an animal print. And then even with this one here, you could pull from any of these purples doing something in the light, medium, and dark. So here I would probably, so this is Periwinkle, Lilac, Violet, Sugar Plum, and Eggplant. I think you could do something really interesting here with Lilac, violet and eggplant that's my thought that would those would be the three that i picked but you could do any of those now the last one i'm going to show you actually gives you e oh here's a purple one and here's a purple one where i switched and i swapped the dark and the medium in different um sections on the chart so fun though so fun picking colors can you imagine doing a bright neon hat in animal print like That'd be fun to crochet and fun to wear. <laughs> okay, and so remember I said this is a repeating pattern, right? So if you're unfamiliar with how to design uh, a repeating pattern, which I totally understand if you are, what if you wanted to change the different leopard spots to different colors? In this chart, not only am I showing you how to do a rainbow, um, a rainbow, a rainbow color palette, but also showing you where each of the motifs start and stop along the repeating section. Isn't that helpful? Because if you were to try to guess at this and not understand what a repeating pattern is, and you did this one a different color than this one, because let's go back to the other chart. Would you, I mean, if you didn't under, <laughs> it's not easy to do. Here we go. If you were unfamiliar with how to, uh, with what a repeating pattern means in a chart, you wouldn't know which color to do for what on there. And what if it, you made the mistake of making this a different color than this one, not realizing that they are two halves of the same piece. Same with this one and this one, not realizing they are two halves of the same piece. Or this one and this one, they are two pieces of the same motif. So I took all of that guesswork out of it when I shared this chart. And this chart shows you how you would change colors for each of the motifs, but keeping each motif its own solid color. So here I represented rainbow colors. So there's a red, an orange, a yellow, a green, a blue, and a purple. And so you could, let's go, we could talk about this all day long in some of these rainbow palettes that I've put together here, but you can also put together any rainbow palettes or what if you wanted to do team colors or whatever theme you wanted to do, you could do that with this chart as well. So I think these charts are gonna be super helpful for helping you think outside the box and play around with color uh, within an animal print. <laughs> I mean. I think it's pretty obvious that I am a huge animal print lover. Uh, we all know that I love to wear leopard print <laughs> as much as possible. Uh, so for me, this is extremely exciting, but I know there are other people that like animal print too. And whether you want to do different types of neutrals, going with the snow leopard or the, the traditional warm colors of leopard, it's really fun to see how leopard print looks in other colors too. You could do this all in camouflage. Wouldn't that be a fun uh, gift for somebody too? Yes, I will. 
I in the future I will do other animal prints too, Grace. I did draw a chart for a zebra print the same time I drew the chart for this leopard print years ago. Um, I'm pretty sure I know where it's at, but hey, if I can design something once, I can design it a second time too. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna really uh, freak out about it. Aren't you glad I'm not gonna freak out about it? <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> Uh, that's a good point, Pearl. Yes, the rainbow looks like Lego pieces. They all look like Lego pieces, actually, because they're pixels, right? Uh, the way you draw a chart for color work is kind of the way you would convert a photo or a picture to a pixelated drawing, and that's because you represent all the color changes in little squares. Yeah, Christine, you could definitely pick um, you could definitely pick camo colors. We've got lots of different uh greens in the yellow green family including Dijon mustard and chartreuse and olive green there's and uh and forest green and dark sage there's lots of great really great greens in that medium yellow green and even pulling in brown I think you'd have lots of options there and depends on which camel um palette you wanted to use right I forget what they're called but I know that there are a couple of different color palettes Yeah, Sharon, that would be a great idea. Once you have the chart, you can uh, definitely make a scarf as well to go with it. Um, what I would suggest for a scarf, though, is to make, I would make it like the hat as a tube because look at um, how much nicer that would look than having a right and wrong side. So have you ever seen a scarf where it's reversible? I think making, like, if you wanted to make this into a scarf, I would follow the instructions for the hat and just not close up the crown and make the hat super long and work it in the round so that it would be reversible on both sides and gosh that would be gorgeous wouldn't it i think that would be a wonderful idea so sharon it would not take a whole lot of modifying to do to convert this pattern into a scarf pattern simply and you could even the edging actually is pretty on there i think it is nice to have a ribbing at the bottom and whether you wanted to do a cowl as well i would really consider the circumference though for a cowl, this might be too tight. I would go up to the, the largest size in the pattern or figure out what the, the multiple is. However many, I think it's a 16 stitch repeat for the uh, chart. So whatever the, I think the largest size in the hats is probably 24 inches. I might do one extra repeat or even two to make sure that you have a big enough cowl that feels comfortable around the neck without scraping across your face. Uh, I do carry that we carry the colors in a pattern like this so I'm not sure what you're talking about Judy but you could absolutely add fringe that would be no problem as well let's see does anybody have any other questions thanks for all the great questions today everybody All right, I don't see any other questions, but that's okay. Thanks for all of the links, Judy. Judy just shared a link to not only the book where you can order the pre-order, which uh, comes with the promotion of the 24 Crochet Hats book, but she also posted a link to the playlist for the videos here on my YouTube channel. And as you can see, there are a bunch of videos in there now. And um, you'll also see, Excuse me, you'll also see the dates for the live premieres. They will start premiering February 8th at 10 a.m. One video every day for, um, for 24 days until all the patterns. Excuse me, I've got hiccups. Excuse me. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, and you'll see that they are scheduled already. So if you want to get notifications for each of them individually you can if you already get notifications for my channel you'll already be notified when we do the live premieres of them and you'll notice that the left hand instruction videos are also scheduled and they will release one hour after each of their respective right hand videos are live premiered on each of those days 
wow, that even sounds like a lot of work just describing it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're more than halfway done. I've got, uh, I think I've got 13 of the 24 hat pattern videos scheduled plus their left-hand counterparts. And I've got, like I said, i am got this one up in queue to work on this morning. And then the next one will be the Kyler hat, which isn't that a great, uh, isn't that a great texture with those cables? So I'll be teaching that one. Later today for another video, I finished the video for the Kendra hat yesterday showing how to do this cable. There's so many techniques in this book. It's so exciting. Oh, and I don't know if I mentioned, but I did uh, figure out what I'm going to write in the book inscription for it. So that step is done as well. And if you have ordered a book, you will be finding out what the new inscription is. It's really cute and it's definitely a play on the theme of the book. So I'm very happy about that. You know, I always like to make sure that they tie in with the theme of the book. Anyway, thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed the show and tell, uh, the discussion on color work, which gosh, when is that not fun? We got to talk about animal prints and colors. Um, yeah, that's always a fun conversation. <laughs> I enjoy all the questions too. Thank you all for all, always keeping the conversation so light and fun and inspirational. I appreciate all the questions as well. They make the show that much more interesting. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Oh, don't forget, try to spend a few minutes doing self-care, doing anything, anything that makes you happy that's just for you this weekend. And I promise I'll do the same. I'll see you Monday morning, same time, same place. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.